I've got all the little cracks filled in. I've done a little bit more extra carving here and there, and I think I've got this uh, looking more or less the way I want it. Now we're going to add some color. I've given it a good vacuum, gotten rid of all the little loose bits, and I'm going to paint it with just a big old house painting brush, nothing fancy. Uh, also got a little spray bottle filled with water and just a drop or two of uh, dishwashing detergent to break the surface tension. Now obviously the colors you use depend on the colors of the rocks you're trying to portray. Um, my system is using two colors. I've got a, sort of a medium dirty brown color, sort of the color of the finished rocks here, and I've got uh, white. I'm just using regular flat house latex paint. I'm using the dirt color is full strength. The white I've diluted uh, a little bit with water to thin it down a little bit. Uh, you know, two parts paint, one part water kind of thing, just to make it a little bit runny. And the basic process is quite simple. Start with your main color and just blob it on in a few places. Perfection is not an issue here. Then I dip the brush into the diluted white. and blob it on in a few more places and of course we've got all this little detail in the rock that's really hard to get a paintbrush in so that's what the spray bottle is for you can sort of paint and spray and it thins down the water and runs into the little cracks and crevices so you do a little bit okay we're running low on paint here let's put a little more in here idea is not to make anything exact. The more blotchy the better. Now you can see there when I put the white on we get starting to get some fun little color uh, happenings going on in there. We've got some big cracks just really give it a good spray of water and work the brush in there and everything will eventually all kind of flow together. I'm not sure quite how much you can see in the camera, but I'm just going to get this whole area here a good coat. All right, that was done kind of quickly. There's probably a few little pink areas here and there, but just go over it and uh, make sure you got everything covered. Unless you want pink rocks, then hey, <laughs> that's up to you. So I think we've got that more or less uh, looking pretty good right now. Okay, now we're going to add a little extra color to it. What I use is these bottles of craft paint. These things are pretty ubiquitous. You can get them anywhere nowadays. Um, Again, again, depends on the colors of your rocks you're using. I've got a very dark color, not black. This one's called Bittersweet. I'm going to use that to basically highlight all the dark cracks and fissures into it. And i got kind of a rust color here, terracotta it's called, just to make my rocks look a little rusty. And as I mentioned before, it all depends on the color of the, rock, the, color of the rocks you're doing. What I do is I take that paint, dilute it uh, quite a bit with methyl hydrate, and put it in these funky little uh, drop bottles here. You can get those at probably any craft store. And while the uh, latex paint is still wet, you simply grab the bottle and just start lobbing it on. See this is the dark color so I like putting it in so that all the the cracks and stuff. And you say neatness is not necessarily a, a good thing here because this will all get sort of covered up and blended over afterwards. And of course it looks like my bottle's going to plug up while I'm trying to do a video. And because the latex paint is wet underneath there, you can see it kind of starting to run and mix together and do all sorts of funny things that sort of mimic rock. Well, I think I've got more or less all the, the dark parts highlighted, or dark lighted, is that a word? That's starting to look a little strange at this point, but don't worry. I'm going to take my rust color and uh, throw a little rust here and there. This I'm not so 
much worried about getting it in the cracks is just kind of just blobbing it on here and there nothing really that critical at this point the colors look a little harsh a little blobby but that's okay if you want you can go with, in with a little brush and just kind of mush some of it around a little bit but the point here is to, to leave it very uh, very harsh looking very demarcated we're going to blend this all in later you just keep adding colors and you can use two or three colors to do if you've got rocks that are a little bit more variegated I find that the base latex coat and the two colors seems to work for me for the rocks I'm doing but there's no hard and fast rules about this and just keep adding colors here and there okay I think that's looking colorful enough and you can see in some ears the two different types of paint are reacting and making all sorts of little lines and fissures and stuff like that so alright the trick now is to let that dry uh, if you're impatient like me I get the hair dryer and put it on there alright I've zoomed in a little bit so we can maybe get a closer look at the rocks uh, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up but there's just an enormous amount of little detail cracks and crevices and the paints run into it uh, perhaps if I take a flashlight and just kinda move it along here you can sort of see how much detail is really in this rocks and uh, it sounds very impressive to say you've carved them all yourself but the foam really does most of the work I'm going to zoom out now and uh, I'm going to continue the coloring process and moving on to stage three in coloring the rocks you can see the slight difference between the rocks we're working on and existing rocks these ones are a little more gray for this step we just use spray paint I've got a flat gray and I've got a uh, flat tan color of some kind nutmeg it's called there again colors depend on what you're doing okay, we're now going to go at it with the spray paint um, the main reason for this is to kind of blend everything together you'll notice that some of the little blobs and runs we put on with the uh, diluted paint kind of stand out a little bit too much so using the spray paint is going to blend it all together the trick here is, here is to try and get it just sort of on the edges of it which is a little hard because I'm kind of in a box canyon here but we're going to have a go at it it's just very lightly misting it you don't want to cover all the hard work you've done before just ever so lightly misting it something like that then we can go in with the nutmeg color and make a few rocks a little warmer this is a fairly quick step okay I think that's looking pretty good now maybe I'll add a little bit more gray over this side to kind of match the existing color perfect alright now we gotta let that dry and the last step is uh, dry brushing so I think that's it for tonight tomorrow morning we'll have a go at dry brushing them that's the final step and we'll see you then hello welcome back we've let the rocks dry overnight they're good and dry we can go ahead with our dry brushing most of you are probably familiar with the dry brushing technique but I'll quickly go over it um, what I use is just some white paint just straight acrylic I usually put a little blob of it on a piece of uh, styrofoam luckily you'll have lots of that and the trick to dry brushing is to load your brush up and then wipe most of it off so the brush is dry oddly enough and then with that brush you can go onto the rocks and just ever so lightly just dust them and the paint sticks just to the edges and all that does it just sort of pops out the detail a little bit zoom the camera a little bit so you can get a closer look at what I'm actually doing here and just by very gently barely brushing on any paint just hitting the very tops of the rocks that just pops them out a little bit usually the lighting on our layouts is nowhere near as bright as the sunlight so this sort of almost simulates light just kind of striking just the tops of the, the rocks you don't want to overdo this too much and it starts to look uh, 
a little uh, overdone, little Disneyland, so just a little bit on the rough stuff, and hopefully you can pick that up on the camera, how it's just popping out all those little details. Okay, I think that's about got that area all dry brushed. That's the last step, and there you have it, finished rocks. Lightweight, easy, and in my opinion, very realistic. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Happy carving.